buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. How can you truly enjoy the meal unless you know the flavor? Ah, welcome back, ABL fans. This is Big Earl, your trusted voice in action baseball league analysis, coming at you with our 10th installment of Deep Dive 25. Watch your fingers, because we're about to slice, dice, and dissect all the nuances of this great league. A tip of the cap to the beat writer at the Dallas Morning News, whose coverage is a blend of legendary sports journalism, marked by wit and wisdom. Your articles capture the essence of the team with a depth and clarity that's simply unmatched. Okay. ABL fanatics, let's do this. Whether it's the Central Workhorses, the Western Wildcards, or the Eastern Powerhouses, we're covering it all. See it for yourself. Ah, the Dallas Rustlers in the Central Division of the NBC, a team that's shaping up to be a dark horse in the league. Boasting a savvy front office and a GM renowned for strategic finesse, this team is a force to be reckoned with. Watch out for them, folks. The rustlers have the grit and guile to make some serious noise in the long haul. If you're one of those folks who can't get enough of the nitty-gritty, the ins and outs, the ups and downs of ABL baseball, then this deep dive is for you. It's like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You never know what treasure you're gonna find. Ah, grab a cold glass of Dr. Pepper and strum that steel guitar because we're delving into a team as multifaceted and spirited as Dallas' vibrant cityscape and the endless Texas prairies. Question 1. How does the owner's personality and negotiation style influence the team's culture and performance? Rustler's reality check, a ticking clock and a game of front office chess. In the saloon of Dallas Rustler's management, owner Tommy Malden is the worried bartender mixing a cocktail of control and caution. GM Jim Griffith, the seasoned card player, brings an easygoing nature and a high-stakes reputation to the table, perfectly countering Malden's tight grip. Field manager Brian Parsley's conventional playbook is a safe bet, but whether it's the right hand to play remains the million-dollar question. Pitching coach Dave Mendez is the tactician in the corner, a silent ace up the team's sleeve, while hitting coach Brad Sewell is the rookie with a poor track record, gambling with borrow time. They're mostly singing in harmony, but make no mistake, if this squad doesn't start belting out wins, Malden will be the first to change the tune. Question 2. What roles do the front office and coaches play in the team's success or struggles? Are they aligned with the owner's vision? The Rustler's chessboard, a game of strategy, alignment, and the clock ticking down. Listen up, ABL aficionados, cause we're diving deep into the Dallas Rustler's brain trust. Imagine a chess game where the GM, field manager, and coaches are the pieces and the owner, Tommy Malden, is the hand moving him. GM Jim Griffith's easygoing nature and top-notch reputation could make him the queen on this board, versatile and aligned with Malden's quest for a winning season. Field manager Brian Parsley? He's more like the bishop, conventional and cautious, echoing Malden's balanced financial approach. But don't overlook the Knights, pitching coach Dave Mendez and hitting coach Brad Sewell. Mendez's tactical smarts could make him the secret weapon, while Sewell's poor rep might render him the pawn Malden sacrifices first. Overall, they're mostly in tune with the owner's vision, but let's not mince words, if this team doesn't get its act together pronto, you can bet Malden's gonna tip that chessboard faster than you can say checkmate. Question 3. How does the team's financial health reflect in its performance? The Rustler's Fiscal Rodeo, a tightrope walk over mediocrity. Ah, uh, buckle up, ABL fans, because we're in for a fiscal rodeo with the Dallas Rustlers. On paper, this team is as balanced as a checkbook at the end of the month, with a payroll nuzzling up close to their total revenue and a budget that leaves little room for high-stakes gambles. They're packing the stadium at 94%, yet the fan interest, sitting at a lukewarm 72, shows the crowd's not exactly on fire. Tommy Malden's balanced financial goal seems to be in harmony with these numbers, but let's not kid ourselves, this team isn't hitting any financial home runs. They've got enough cash for trades to maybe add a role player or two, but don't expect any blockbuster moves. Bottom line? The Rustlers are cruising in second gear, teetering between a breakout season and the abyss of mediocrity. They better find the gas pedal soon, cause in the high octane world of the ABL, nobody remembers who came in fifth. Question 4. How has fan interest evolved over time, and what does it mean for the team's revenue and player acquisitions? Rustler's Fan Folly, a decade-long roller coaster with no thrills. Well, pull up a chair, ABL diehards, cause we're talking the fickle mistress that is fan interest in the Dallas Rustlers. 
A decade-long joyride, if you can call it that, that started humbly in 72, spiked like a well-hit fast pitch in 77 and 78, and now meanders like a Texas creek at a lukewarm 72 and 81. This roller coaster of fan fervor, or lack thereof, has the rustlers scraping decent but not dazzling numbers at the ticket booth and, let's face it, a payroll that couldn't lure a top free agent if it came with a lifetime supply of barbecue. With gate revenue and season ticket sales just shy of sizzling, the rustlers are far from the box office hit you'd write home about. They've got some cash for trades, but don't bet your last stets and they'll snag a marquee name. With a worried owner like Tommy Malden, this middling fan interest better spike, or else the rustlers might just be the ones getting roped and tied. Question 5. What is the current mood among the fan base, and how could it impact the team in the short term? Rustlers fan thermometer, lukewarm today, but what about tomorrow? Listen up, ABL buffs, because the mood in Dallas is what I'd call cautiously optimistic, a 30-day uptick in fan interest and a stadium packed to 94% of its gills. Sounds dandy, right? But don't go popping the champagne just yet. This fan base is loyal but not fanatical, kinda like a good old hunting dog that's still deciding if you're worth following into the woods. In the short haul, this moderate enthusiasm translates to decent ticket sales, a morale boost for the players, and a front office that might still be on eggshells, given that Tommy Malden is pacing around like a worried parent on prom night. What we've got here, folks, is a ticking clock. A winning streak could turn this simmer into a full-blown boil, but a few missteps could send this team's popularity plummeting like a barrel over Niagara Falls. So, let's see if the rustlers can stoke this fire or if they'll end up just another pile of ashes. Question 6. How is the team faring in the league standings, and what factors are contributing to their performance? Rustlers early season report, a crossroads between promise and peril. Hold on to your hats, ABL aficionados, because the Dallas Rustlers are at a baseball crossroads as tantalizing as a hanging curveball. Sporting a 12-7 record with a winning percentage that would make any manager grin, they're a team that's gotten a taste of the good life. But before you start dreaming of October glory, pump the brakes, this squad's hit a minor snag with two recent losses and a last 10 games performance that's as mixed as a Texas weather forecast. Their run differential suggests they're no slouches, but the strength of schedule makes you wonder if they've been feasting on low-hanging fruit. Playoff odds? Favorable but not a sealed deal. And let's talk metrics, the base runs are a tad inflated, and while their ELO rating won't make you swoon, their team war shows there's genuine talent laced up in those cleats. In short, the Rustlers are a team with potential teetering on the edge of a knife, cutting through the league or risking a self-inflicted wound, the next few weeks will tell. Question 7. What are the team's odds of making the playoffs on a divisional and conference level? The Rustlers playoff roulette, better odds than a coin flip, but don't bet the farm. Ah, the sweet smell of postseason promise. It's in the air, folks, but it's mingling with the musk of uncertainty for the Dallas Rustlers. Listen closely, they've got a 43.3% shot at busting through the divisional door to the playoffs, which is nothing to sneeze at but far from a coronation. Dreaming of the new Grand Series Cup? Well, at 8.7%, you better keep that champagne corked. Now, pull back the lens to the conference level, and they're sitting prettier with a 56.7% chance. It's like being the favorite in a poker hand, you're liking your odds, but you're not about to go all in without seeing the river card. So, Rustlers fans, your team is in the thick of the playoff hunt, but if they start counting their chickens before they hatch, they'll find themselves in a henhouse of disappointment. Question 8. How do base runs and ELO ratings paint a picture of the team's true strengths and weaknesses? Crunching the numbers, Rustlers tail told in base runs and ELO. Ah, uh, ladies and gents, let's cut to the chase, base runs and ELO ratings, numbers that speak louder than a stadium full of booing fans. The Rustlers are dancing around a base run scored of 111 and a base runs allowed of 92. They're hitting above their weight in runs scored but could use a nip and tuck on the pitching mound. ELO? Sitting at a pedestrian 1500.3, smack dab in the middle of mediocrity and magnificence. So what's the upshot? The rustlers are neither the toast of the town nor the bread that's gone stale, just a club teetering between could-be champs and also rants. They've got to keep that clutch hitting alive and tune up the arms in the bullpen if they aim to rise from the muddy middle. Question 9. What does the team's war indicate about its most valuable players? The war room, rustlers aces and bases. Listen up, you armchair managers and bleach your profits. When it comes to the rustlers, the war, wins above replacement, stands at 8.2, as respectable as a well-kept mustache on a veteran skipper. 
Break it down and you'll find the hurlers are edging out the swingers, boasting a pitching war of 4.3 against the position players 3.9. Translation? While the bats have their moments of glory, it's the golden arms in the bullpen that might just be the ticket to Rustler's fame this season. But let's not forget, in this grand old game, it ain't just about the stars, it's about the constellation they form. So, keep an eye on those war numbers, folks. They'll tell you who's carrying the team, but remember, it takes a village, or at least a dugout, to clinch those W's. Question 10. How have injuries impacted the team's performance and depth? Dodging the DL, Rustler's injury report and its silver lining. Sit down, sports fans, because I've got news softer than a rookie's glove. When it comes to the injury bug, the Dallas Rustlers are more Teflon than most. Ranked 15th in the ABL for injuries, they've only got a duo on the DL, costing him 26 days and a measly $15.5,000. In a league where injuries can unravel a season faster than you can say Tommy John, the Rustlers are standing tall and mostly whole. This means their bench isn't looking like Swiss cheese, and their front office can scheme and dream without the dark cloud of injury woe. But don't get cozy folks, in baseball, luck can swing faster than a cleanup hitter eyeing a hanging curveball. Question 11. What do the team's batting statistics reveal about its offensive capabilities? Swinging lumber with authority, Rustler's offensive juggernaut. Listen up, ABL aficionados, Dallas Rustler's bats are hotter than a Texas summer. With a team batting average of 293 and an on-base percentage at 363, these boys are more reliable than grandma's meatloaf. Their slugging sits at a menacing 457, telling you they're not just base huggers, they're gap finders and fence clearers. A strikeout rate of just 15.1%? That's fewer whiffs than a perfume-free beauty pageant. Toss in a walk rate of 8.82%, and you've got a lineup making pitchers sweat more than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Sure, their bob of 3.30 suggests a sprinkle of luck, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. In sum, these rustlers can not only get on the saddle, but they can also ride. Question 12. How does the pitching staff stack up against divisional and conference competition? The rustlers pitching puzzle, more than meets the ERA. Don't let that 4.67 ERA fool you folks, there's more to this Dallas rustlers pitching staff than meets the eye. Dive deeper, and you'll find a fielding independent pitching, FIP, of 3.44, showing these hurlers are better than what the scoreboard's been telling us. They're ground ball artisans with a 56.5% rate, keeping the ball in the park like a seasoned politician keeps secrets. But let's not sugarcoat it, the walk rate of 6.8% needs trimming, like a Texan's lawn in July. Only 7 dingers allowed so far, proof they're not serving up too many meatballs. Their luck's been shakier than a cat on a hot tin roof, with a bobbip of 331, suggesting a change of fortune might be blowing in with the next Texas wind. All in all, these rustler pitchers are the league's Rubik's Cube, puzzling but potentially solvable. And solving that puzzle could spell trouble for the rest of the ABL. Question 13. Are the team's fielding statistics a strength or a weakness? Rustler's fielding, not quite a Picasso, more like a paint by numbers. Hold your applause folks, the Dallas Rustlers fielding stats are as mixed as a Texas barbecue platter. With a total zone runs of minus 0.65, they're not exactly robbing hitters of glory, but they're not handing out gifts either. Talk about a split personality, some positions look like they're vying for a gold glove, while others appear to be playing hot potato. Nine errors so far? That's like forgetting your anniversary, recoverable, but you'd rather not. Their defensive efficiency of 0.67 is decent, like your grandpa's old stories, entertaining but not going to win any awards. They've got a firm grip on the run game, allowing only six stolen bases and gunning down a third of would-be thieves. In a nutshell, they're not the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball, but they're not the bad news bears either. It's a middle-of-the-road show that needs a few high notes if they aim to make a deep run in the ABL. Question 14. What do base running stats say about the team's tactical approach? Rustler's base running, a gamble not paying dividends. Ah, the Dallas Rustlers, a team that treats base running like a weekend gambler, full of hope but short on luck. With a stolen base percentage of just 53.8%, they're rolling the dice and coming up snake eyes too often. Don't look for speed demons here, they've swiped only 7 bags while getting nabbed 6 times. That's like trying to outrun a bear and tripping over your own feet. The weighted stolen base run sitting at minus 0.46 suggests they're shooting themselves in the foot, or maybe the clique. All told, it's a base running strategy that's about as effective as a screen door on a submarine. 
Time for the wrestlers to either go big or go home, because in the cutthroat world of the ABL, you can't win if you're giving away the store. Question 15. Who are the standout performers in batting, and what do their stats reveal? Wrestlers batting stars, young guns, and steady hands. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a reason to buy a ticket to a Dallas wrestlers game, I've got three for you, Jose Castillo, Devin Barlow, and Cliff Barron. These boys are swinging lumber like Paul Bunyan in a forest. Castillo, a young whippersnapper at second base, is tearing it up with an OPS over one. No, your eyes aren't fooling you, that kid's a comet streaking through the ABL sky. Then there's Devin Barlow, our masked marvel behind the plate, not just framing pitches but crushing him with an OPS of 910. Let's not forget Cliff Barron at the hot corner, who's got more pop than a 4th of July fireworks show, although he could stand to cut down on the whiffs. What's the upshot? The rustlers have themselves a trio of batters who can change a game quicker than you can say play ball. And the best part? These aren't grizzled vets on their last legs, these are young studs and seasoned pros meshing like a Texas barbecue. So sit back and enjoy the show folks, it's gonna be a barn burner. Question 16. Who are the key figures in the pitching staff, and how do they influence games? Aces and anchors, the rustlers mound maestros. Listen up folks, the Dallas rustlers have themselves a three-headed monster on the mound, and it's a beautiful blend of youthful zing and season cunning. First up is Gabriel Zayas, a 25-year-old wunderkind who's got grounders coming off his fingertips like water off a duck's back. Just try and elevate one on him. Then there's Anton Garay, the 28-year-old woof wizard, who could probably strike out a ghost. And let's not forget the crafty old fox, Warren Holster, whose ERA is more deceiving than a magician with a deck of cards, his FIPs telling the real tale. Put it all together and you've got a rotation that doesn't hand out walks like candy on Halloween, keeps the ball in the yard like a well-trained pup, and can bail themselves out of trouble faster than a cat on a hot tin roof. If you're swinging lumber in the ABL, you best be on your toes when facing this rustler's trio. Question 17. Who excels in base running and fielding? and how do they impact the game's outcome? Slick gloves and swift feet, the wrestlers' game changers. Ah, the unsung heroes, the men who dazzle in the field and dance on the base paths, turning ball games into ballets. On the bases, we've got Alejandro Rosado, the human ghost sign, John Thurston, the crafty veteran who's still got some giddy up, and Jalen Smith, who'd be a blur if you could see him. These fellas are as reliable as a Swiss watch when it comes to thievery. Then you swing over to the leather side of things and meet Cliff Barron, the human vacuum cleaner at third, Ray Swerdlove, who's about as likely to make an error as a rooster is to miss sunrise, and again, the ever-reliable Thurston, who's as smooth as aged bourbon at short. So next time you're watching a rustler's game, keep your eyes peeled. It ain't just about the long ball and case, it's these guys, the masters of the hidden game, who can flip the script when you least expect it. Question 18. What does the team's age demographic reveal about its experience and future potential? Age and Sage, the Dallas Rustlers' perfect mix for now and later. Ah, uh, the Rustlers, a ball club aging like a fine wine, not like milk left out in the Texas sun. With an average age just a hair under 30 for their big league boys, they've got the seasoning of an old western saloon and the zip of a fresh out of the bottle soda pop. Pay special attention to the pitching crew, a youthful brigade clocking in at 28, prime for hurling gems today and years down the road. And don't sleep on the farm system. The AAA and AA ranks are brimming with near-ready talent, not just seat fillers. Even the single-A kids are barely old enough for a legal toast, showing the rustlers are as invested in the future as a Wall Street broker is in blue-chip stocks. So whether you're talking about today's pennant race or the next generations, these rustlers are poised to be in the thick of it. Question 19. Who has had the best batting and pitching games, and what do these performances signify for the team? Game Changers, the Rustlers' show-stopping performances. Hold the presses, folks. The Dallas Rustlers have been staging Broadway-worthy shows, and the stars are Rich Vela, Devin Barlow, and Jose Castillo with their bats, and Anton Garay and Gabriel Zayas on the mound. Vela's eruption against Phoenix was like a 4th of July fireworks finale, while Barlow and Castillo made the LA staff look like batting practice pitchers in a 14-4 drubbing. On the flip side, Garay and Zayas pulled off pitching performances that would make even a grizzled veteran nod in approval. Garay was a virtuoso against Atlanta, while Zayas made Phoenix look about as threatening as a sleeping kitten. This isn't just hot air, this is a Texas tornado warning. The rustlers have the artillery and the snipers to make their mark in the ABL. So get your scorecards ready, because this team is worth the price of admission. Question 20. 
What does your gut tell you about this team in the 1981 championship season and the Grand Tournament of Champions? The wrestlers roar, a sleeper in the 1981 ABL season and G2C. Now listen up y'all. If you're counting the Dallas wrestlers out, you might as well be counting your chickens before they're hatched. My gut's telling me these boys are a firework just waiting for a match. In the regular season, they're simmering, not boiling over, yet. But come G2C, expect a full boil and some. Pitching? A blend of young speedsters and grizzled old-timers that could spell double trouble in any best of seven. And that batting lineup, let me tell you, could make fireworks look like flickering candlelight if Vela and Barlow hit their stride. Ah, but here's the rub, the leather. They've gotta tighten up that fielding if they want to be the ones popping the champagne corks when the dust settles. Trust me, the rustlers have the makings of a showstopper, and in the grand theater of ABL, don't be surprised if they're the ones taking the final bow. Question 21. What is the team's history in the Grand Tournament of Champions? The Rustler's Quest, 1981 and the Echoes of 77. Ah, uh, history, that grand tapestry where the threads of past glories and fumbles weave into today's urgencies. Listen, the Dallas Rustlers aren't just a team, they're a saga with chapters already inked in champagne and sweat. Remember 77? They stormed through the playoffs like a Texas twister through a trailer park, leaving the Cobras, Kings, and Mavericks in their wake to seize the Grand Championship. Fast forward to 81, and you've got a squad with the weight of that crown either booing them or bogging them down, depending on how you see it. The old hands might be whispering tales of 77 into the young buck's ears, kindling fires for another run. And don't think those rivalries have cooled, oh no, they're simmering like a pot of Texas chili. So, here's the skinny, this year's rustlers aren't just swinging for the fences, they're swinging for the history books. And when the dust settles in the Grand Tournament of Champions, don't be shocked if they're the ones writing the latest chapter. Question 22, what is the team's history in previous seasons? The Rustlers roller coaster, from doldrums to diamonds and back again. Ah, uh, the Dallas Rustlers, a ball club that's been tossed around by fate like a tumbleweed in a Texas gale. From the early years of subpar performances and the sound of crickets in the stands, they hit Paydirt in 77 with a grand championship and a cash register that wouldn't stop ringing. But Glory's a fickle mistress, ain't she? They took a nosedive faster than a duck on a June bug, bottoming out in 79. Yet, here they are in 81, off to a hot start with a fat piggy bank and a fan base itching for another October parade. What's the takeaway? This is a team that's been schooled by both triumph and tragedy, and now they're armed with the know-how, the cash, and the hunger to climb that mountain again. So, mark my words, the rustlers aren't just in it for the season, they're in it for the history books. Question 23, what's your take on last season? The 1980 rustlers, a season stuck in limbo. Ah, uh, the Dallas rustlers of 1980, a team that seemed to be waiting for a bus that never came. They scraped together 72 wins while yawning through a 234 batting average and a passable 3.65 ERA. They weren't bad enough to be pitied, but not good enough to be feared. With a so-so attendance of 1.63 million and a plump piggy bank of over 4.5 million dollars, they had the resources but lacked the razzle-dazzle. Even the expected record gave them a shrug, saying they missed a modest mark by a measly three games. So, what's the verdict? The 1980 rustlers were like a lukewarm cup of coffee, neither hot nor cold, just kinda there. And let's be honest, in the sizzling kitchen of the ABL, kinda there doesn't cut the mustard. Question 24. How does what happened in the 1980 season reflect on the 1981 early campaign? 1981 rustlers, shaking off the dust of yesteryear. Ah, uh, the rustlers of 1981, kids, are like a phoenix trying to rise from the 1980 ashes, with the embers of last year's mediocrity still hot on their heels. But let me tell you, these boys seem hungrier for redemption than a dieter eyeing a chocolate cake. That lackluster 72 and 90 record from 1980? It's fueling their early 12 and 7 gallivant in 81. And don't get me started on the money, they've got enough financial cushion to make any deal they fancy, maybe even buy the umpire's new glasses. The fans? They're coming back, like moths to a brighter flame this season, every win in 81 erasing a bit of last year's disappointment. On the field, the bats are waking up while the pitchers are still shaking off some cobwebs. So, mark my words, this 1981 season could be the Rustler's Redemption Song, a tune that could drown out the flat notes of yesteryear. Question 25. What is your take on the current roster? The 1981 Rustlers, a reinvigorated ensemble with eyes on the prize. Listen up, baseball aficionados. 
The 1981 Dallas Rustlers are curious brew of redemption seekers and hotshots folks, and they've got their peepers set on grander stages than last year's middling sideshow. Anton Garay and Gabriel Zayas are the twin turbos in the rotation, while Joe Guy seems lost like a ball in the high sun. Cliff Barron at the hot corner and Rich Vela in left are hitting like they're in a home run derby, and don't you dare overlook middle infielders Jose Castillo and Mike Frierson. Yeah, there are a few bumps, like that injured Bryce Rose, but this ensemble is playing a tune that's got more rhythm than last year's sad ballad. And let's not forget, they've got a pocket full of change with that $4.5 million balance, enough to shake things up come midseason. So here's the skinny, the rustlers are firing on most cylinders, and if they can tune the rest, expect fireworks, not fizzle, in 81. Well, there you have it. You're up close and personal deep dive into the Dallas Rustlers. We've dissected their strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. We've peeked into the owner's suite, dug into the dugout, and even scoped out the fans in the bleachers. And let me tell you, what a ride it's been. Like a well-pitched game, we've covered all the bases. But remember, baseball is a game of unpredictability. Just when you think you've got it figured out, it throws you a curveball. Ah, the Dallas Rustlers, a team that's been galloping through the regular season like a champion rodeo rider. But when it comes to the grand tournament of champions, they've often been the lassoed calf. Will this be the year they take the bull by the horns and dominate the arena? Or are they fated to remain a sideshow in the ABL's grand rodeo? The Rustlers' tale is far from over, and the next chapter promises to be a page-turner. Big Earl here, folks. Keep your eyes peeled for future reports as we navigate through the twists and turns of another gripping ABL season. So, whether you're a fan of the Rustlers or just love the game, the best is yet to come. Until next time, this is the game. See it for yourself. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs>